The Nkatha Freedom Party is a political party in South Africa. Since its founding, it has been led by Mango Sathu Bavalezi. It is currently the fourth largest party in the National Assembly of South Africa, having lost almost half its seats and votes in the 2014 general election and yielding third place to the newly formed Economic Freedom Fighters. Policies Policy proposals of the IFP include devolution of power to provincial governments, introduction of a parliamentary, instead of presidential, system of government, liberalization of trade, lower income taxes, more flexible labor laws, autonomy for traditional African communities and their leaders, allowing traditional authorities to exercise local government functions, opposing the notion that tribalism is inherently regressive and antithetic to development and progress. History Gatsha Mango Sathu Bavalezi, a former member of the ANC Youth League, founded the Nkatha National Cultural Liberation Movement, which later became the IFP on 21 March 1975. Bavalezi used a structure rooted in Nkatha, a 1920s cultural organization for Zulus established by Zulu King Solomon Kadinu Zulu. The party was established in what is now KwaZulu-Natal, after which branches of the party quickly sprang up in the Transvaal, the Orange Free State and the Western Cape. Because of Bavalezi's former position in the African National Congress, the two organizations were initially very close and each supported the other in the anti-apartheid struggle. However, by the early 1980s the IFP had come to be regarded as the thorn in the side of the ANC, which wielded much more political force through the United Democratic Front than the IFP in the Pan-Africanist Congress. Although the IFP leadership favored non-violence, as opposed to the ANC, which had created the Umkota we Siswa, there is clear evidence that during the time that negotiations were taking place in the early 1990s, Nkatha and ANC members were at war with each other, and self-protection units and self-defense units were formed, respectively, as their protection forces. As a homeland leader, the power of Bavalezi depended on the South African state and economy, with anti-apartheid leaders inside South Africa and abroad demanding sanctions. Bavalezi came to be regarded more and more as a government puppet, along with other Bantustan leaders. His tribal loyalties and focus on ethnic interests over national unity were also criticized as contributing to the divisive program of the IFP. This led to a virtual civil war between Zulu loyalist supporters and ANC members in KwaZulu-Natal, fearing an erosion of his power. Bavalezi collaborated with the South African Defense Force and received military training for Zulu militia from SADF Special Forces starting in the 1980s as a part of Operation Marion. IFP members were involved in several massacres in the run-up to South Africa's first democratic elections, including the Trust Feed Massacre on December 3, 1988 and the Boa Patong Massacre on June 17, 1992. During the phase of establishing a constitution for South Africa and prior to the first free elections in South African history, bloodshed frequently occurred between the IFP and the ANC. Both the IFP and ANC attempted to campaign in each other's KwaZulu-Natal strongholds and were met with resistance, sometimes violent, by members of the opposing party. The IFP was also initially opposed to parts of the proposed South African constitution regarding the internal politics of KwaZulu and, in particular, they campaigned for an autonomous and sovereign Zulu king as head of state. As a result, the IFPU abstained from registering its party for the 1994 election, in opposition. However, once it became obvious that its efforts were not going to stop the election, the party was registered at the 11th hour. However, due to their opposition to the constitution, concessions were made in KwaZulu-Natal were granted double ballots for provincial and national legislatures, greater provincial powers. The inclusion of KwaZulu in the official name of the province and recognition of specific ethnic and tribal groups within the province, 
On election day, the IFP displayed its political strength by taking the majority of the votes for KwaZulu-Natal. Post-apartheid politics after the dismantling of the apartheid system in 1994, the IFP formed an uneasy coalition in KwaZulu-Natal with their traditional political rival, the ANC. This coalition was to last until 2004, when the IFP joined the Democratic Alliance, the major opposition party, coalition to the then-dominant ANC. The ANC-IFP rivalry, characterized by sporadic acts of political violence, has been firm since 1993. In 2004, while campaigning in Vullindola, an IFP bastion in the Peter Maritzburg Midlands region, Thabo Mibki was reportedly debarred by an IFP-affiliated traditional leader in Mafunza. Previously the stronghold of Moses Marpida, this area has long been the site of heated clashes between the parties. The IFP's manifesto seeks the resolution to a number of South African issues, especially the AIDS crisis, in addition to addressing unemployment, crime, poverty and corruption and prevent the consolidation of a one-party state. The prevention of a one-party state is with regards to the ruling ANC, which is perceived by many as making efforts to undemocratically consolidate power for their own party. The IFP also states that our proposals are designed to give people control over their lives. A hand up, not a hand down. Social justice for all. We also have the political will to deal effectively with these problems. Gavin Woods report Gavin Woods, one of the party's most respected MPs, drew up a highly critical 11-page internal discussion document at the request of the Parliamentary Caucus after a discussion in October 2004. In it he said that the IFP has no discernible vision, mission or philosophical base, no clear national ambitions or direction, no articulated ideological basis and offers little in the way of current, vibrant original and relevant policies. Woods also warned the party that it must treat Bothalesi as the leader of a political party and not the political party itself. Woods pinpointed 1987 as the year when the IFP started losing ground as a political force. Before 1987, Woods contends the party had a strong, unambiguous national identity. Woods criticized the IFP's inability to end the ANC's campaign of violence against it, and an impotent attitude towards the attacks conducted against it by the ANC. At the first caucus discussion, Woods read out the 11-page paper in full and caucus members were generally positive about its frank nature. IFP President Mango Suthu Bhadalesi was absent from that meeting but raised it at a meeting of the party's National Council, which Woods did not attend. At a subsequent caucus meeting where both were present, Bhadalesi read from a prepared statement attacking Woods. All the numbered copies were ordered to be shredded, but some survived. Elections 2009 Political violence The IFP's build-up to the 2009 general elections was marked by a resurgence in its long-standing feud with the ANC, which had decided to adopt more proactive campaigning tactics in Natal. The IFP election manifesto was accordingly sharply critical of the ruling party, its policies and its executive with the Zimbabwean crisis and the shoddy mediation of the ANC and the Southern African Development Community, drawing peculiar attention. In a press statement dated 26 January, party official Ben Skarzana wrote, SADC leadership including President Motlanta may have to face the reality that ZANU PF military and police may be playing a much stronger role than the politicians in this crisis and need to engage them in the negotiations for the future of Zimbabwe. 
There were frequent bouts of electoral violence between the parties in the build-up to the polls, particularly in Natal. On 8 April, at 21.16, the IFP issued a press statement accusing ANC members of assaulting Zanella Kamagwaza MSIBI, its Natal premier candidate and national chairperson, in the Gamaluka township of Port Shepstone, a historical melting pot for IFP ANC tensions. The incident began, according to the report, when some 50 ANC backers, in flagrant contravention of the Electoral Code of Conduct, disrupted an official IFP event and hurled abuse at the party's representatives and supporters. The report added that the South African Police Service had to be called in to escort the dignitaries out of harm's away. This event, whether it happened or not, followed a similar disruption by ANC supporters, IFP Provincial Secretary Bonginko Siba the Lezi put their number at more than 500 in Greytown the previous Sunday, when they barricaded a road leading into the NH Lakanla Township and stoned IFP motor vehicles. Injuries were sustained by, among others, the mayor of the Omzanyadi district municipality, Mabang Izani Yengwa. The IFP reported both incidents to the Sapsan Independent Electoral Commission, accusing the ruling party of intimidation, assault and denying it its right to campaign freely, and expected exemplary action to be taken. According to Bong Inkosi Bavalezi, the stoning happened in full view of the police, who failed in their duty to restore order. He added that the ANC members concerned had defied their own party leadership, claiming that the ANC regional chairperson in the Bumbatha area, Filani Mavundla, had made a failed attempt to rein in the crowd. An impasse followed and lasted approximately two hours. Having been abandoned by the SAPs, the IFP delegation dispersed and found its way out of the ambush on its own, he added. The IFP also laid charges of malicious damage to private property and public violence at the Greytown Police Station. Police spokesperson Superintendent Cypher Mafalala confirmed the incident. The case was opened and we are investigating, IEC spokesperson Mawaithu Motu said that the IEC was deeply concerned at the increased violence and intimidation, and hoped that the parties would seek means of politically tolerant electioneering in the build-up to the elections. The IFP reported the incident, and we will look into the matter. Political parties need to be aware that intimidation does not help them to retain votes they have in particular area, sick, nor get new ones. It just doesn't work like that, he said. Fraud charges at Umlabuya Lingana on 9 April. The IFP reacted with alarm to reports that its Umlabuya Lingana local municipality had accumulated unaccounted for monies of some R3 million. It promised to react strongly, and called for a forensic audit. Our party will get to the bottom of this, said Professor Thamba Simang, chairman of its policy oversight committee, and, if heads have to roll, so be it. They will, final drive Mango Suthu Bavalezi and Kamagwaza MSIBI hosted the party's final pre-election news conference on Tuesday 14 April, at Northwood Crusaders Sports Club, Durban North, where they adumbrated their 10-point plan for the party's first 100 days back in provincial power. Also launched was the SIZONQOBA campaign, the IFP's final election drive for the province. Worst ever performance the IFP performed unprecedentedly poorly at the polls, taking just 4.55% of the national vote and coming nowhere near victory in Natal. This prompted widespread speculation in the media that its days as a political force were numbered. Far-famed cartoonist Sapiro took the opportunity to lampoon its long-serving leader with the tag, just about finished. While other reports had it that Kamagwaza MSIBI was suffering ill health, post-election efforts on 3 May, in a bid to address its problems and dispel media rumors about the well-being of its national chairperson, 
The IFP announced that Camaguaza MSIBI would host several post-election rallies in addition to the many public meetings she is already chairing across NATO to thank all those who voted IFP. As of 3 May, her itinerary had covered Zululand, Amajuba and Ethiquini. The IFP also announced that, rather than lead the party as official opposition in the KwaZulu-Natal legislature, Kamagwaza MSIBI had opted to stay on as mayor of the Zululand district municipality as part of efforts to revive the IFP's grassroots support ahead of the 2011 local government elections. The party's post-election priority is the need to accelerate service delivery at local level rather than play opposition politics, she announced, after consulting at length with the party's internal structures.